Good afternoon, fam. Mighty Mike Tull. Um, had a great time with my friends over with uh, Kaizen Martial Arts. My buddy, sparring partner, uh, Chris Marr. Coach Chris Marr is the bomb. Um, whenever I get a chance to go and, and teach at any one school, um, I have a keen eye, especially because of all the years that I've been uh, uh, teaching. Um, and it happens with everyone that is a coach in martial arts or actually in any other sport as well. The, the more you're around it, the more you're able to uh, see things uh, with a level of vision that is usually higher than sometimes the players themselves. And usually a player that stays engaged in uh, that sport for long enough, they actually develop that eye as well. And one of the things I notice in sparring still to this day is that when techniques are fired, they're usually fired in singled, as singles. It's, it's rare that you see combinations, and, and coaches have been spouting this out to fighters for years, not just in martial arts, but in kickboxing and MMA. The, the more that you throw, uh, the more you throw combinations, the easier it is for you to get opportunities to score. All right? Now, a lot of times when I mention score, people are thinking in terms of just point fighting. That's, that's not true. I mean... Boxers score by throwing quality punches to legal areas. Same thing with MMA fighters. So we have to be thinking that that uh, pretty much a combat sport is a combat sport unless we're talking about grappling. When we talk about striking, the objectives are, are pretty much the same. The only difference in a continuous uh, division or a semi-contact or what people call point fighting at, at tournaments is that the contact is not full, it's not all out. And when we're talking about the semi-contact point fighting, usually once judges see contact uh, to a legal scoring area, they stop the action and the, the judges will actually make a call. The, the majority calls uh, going in one direction, that point goes to that fighter that scored. So to, to get on to this discussion that I've had with you before, and please, please, if you're trying to be a good fighter, you cannot be one of those students that's like, oh, the coach says the same thing over and over again. Oh, well, if the coach is saying something over and over again, it's probably something that's important. It's probably something that could be the difference between you being successful and being unsuccessful. So what we have to do is humble ourselves and listen to what our coach is saying, whether it's something that he said to us once or said a thousand times. So when we're sparring, okay, here, and you know, watching sparring last night with, with my friends, uh, students, uh, this is what I see a lot of time. I see this, okay? And, and, and the thing is, is that after your opponent gets comfortable, they may get hit with the first jab, okay? But after they, you've seen it coming in the same direction, they now begin to process ways to deal with it. So this is the reason why not only we want to throw in combination, but we also want to change the levels of where we shoot our technique. So for example, if I throw a high kick, a low punch is going to probably be, be the, my best bet because at this point, my, my opponent is still, a split second, they're still caught up in that high kick and they miss out on the punch. Now off of that high kick, I'm basically throwing my techniques, the first two techniques straight ahead of the target. So I throw the ax and I come down. So I threw two techniques on a straight line. And at the same time with that commitment of the punch, I pulled myself in closer. I, I, I've seen people do this and then back straight up. Okay, this is one of the worst things to do. It, it's difficult, it's challenging to get in close enough so that you're able to make contact with the target. So the last thing you wanna do is to back up or make a wide circle. Why? Because this is going to give your opponent confidence to get back. So we want to limit that by making sure that after we've thrown a technique, so I work a fake, I shoot the kick. I come down and punch. At this position, I, my, my body is, is coming forward in a boxing stance. I can work good boxing combinations on the inside. So what this does is, is it gives me uh, momentum and it prevents my opponent from being able to come forward with too many uh, combinations for me to deal with. So 
It's almost like a race. You know what I'm saying? A race, please don't feel like you have to rush your techniques. What I'm saying is, is that you want to get off first. That's the term, get off the line first. Whether we're talking about kickboxing or point fighting, do you want to be the one that gets off first? So my opponent's there, he's waiting. I work here, I punch. From the inside, okay, I can't call my own point. Is he a sport karate fighters do this stuff all the time? No one said break. The fight is still on. They get bopped upside the head, and they get a point scored against them because they stopped before the ref said stop. So I work, fake, here, here, covering up, and working boxing techniques, all right? So I'm moving around. I bait and I fake. This is what a lot of people do now. Right? So do two techniques and then back up. The best way for you to develop good rhythm in your sparring is to move and throw in combinations. So I bang fake. Then from here, I punch. I go to the body. I can move out on the angle. I can here work on the inside, throwing techniques. Front leg, back leg, combination. So I'm doing all of this motion, all these techniques in what we consider a sport karate or point fighting tournament. So I can throw conventional point sparring technique, put the short range in there. When I'm in the clinch, and in the clinch, they're here, here. You can clinch in like this. Judges will run in and push you apart and say, no grabbing. But by doing this, getting in range, and with the clinch, I can keep from getting hit. All right, so thinking in terms of the distance, how I can get inside, and how I can control not getting hit. So I move, bait and fake, here, attack, come on the inside, shoot technique, I can shift back, I can throw a kick, Basically what I'm doing is I'm showing that I'm in control. No matter what's going on, no matter who it is, I wanna make sure that I'm in inside in control. I hope this helps you guys out. I want you to practice it. I want you guys to go ahead and put that phone in front of you and look at the techniques. Listen to the advice I'm giving you. You don't have to have one of these. All you need is some space where you can get out there, work your baits and fakes, and put combinations together to make it easier for you to spar. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you're ready for a private lesson, we get together and work one-on-one -on -one here, you can reach me at Pima Gaithersburg, P-I-M-A-G-A-I-T-H-E-R-S-B-U-R-G, Pima Gaithersburg at gmail.com. We can uh, do a lesson here, and this is my home dojo. As you can see, I have all my equipment here. I have a nice, safe, padded floor. Depending on your location, we are going to travel out to where you are. But um, yeah, definitely, this is my passion. I've been doing this for 38 years. And the biggest part of the passion, alongside with the training, is also being able to coach and build future champions, not just in the ring, but in the life as well. So thanks for tuning in. You guys have a great day.